219 to go in the third quarter. And Eric Lockhart having a great game. Morgan Bingham adds to his total. His first yard numbers, first half, half numbers. Eight carries for 37 yards. 4-6 average. Yeah, Mike, he keeps that up. He'll be uh, he'll be fast <laughs> approaching that 100-yard mark, too. And, you know, giving one or two more, uh, he's probably about 20 yards short. So we still got an, another quarter to go. So I, I suspect we'll see probably a 250-yard-plus and another 100-yard on the same team in the backfield. Who needs to throw? Yeah, we're looking at 500 yards on the ground tonight. Rodney down there on the uh, track, giving him the push-ups for the uh, touchdown. Jones will take the kickoff at the eight-yard line. He smashed, but continues to go out to the 28. A 20-yard return, and New Mexico will take over. At, uh, as you watch the replay at halftime, I ran into Corey Esplin. She helps with the Dixie College cheerleaders down here. Wanted us to give them a plug. Maybe we can get a shot of the cheerleaders as they try to keep the fans pumped up here for the last quarter of the ball game. It'll be first and 10 for New Mexico at the 28 yard line and they'll hand it to Jones. No, a little play action fake. They faked me out and he's wide the way open. down. They faked everybody out on that play. And a great catch by number 80, Ted Moore. 6-1 freshman from Harlingen, Texas. Yeah, Mike, you'll see here on the replay, they've done a great job uh, selling that. And there's a look at the cheerleaders down there doing a good job keeping the fans in the game. Uh, it's awful tough when you're leading 28-0 to, to stay in the game, and the cheerleaders doing a good job. But good play action pass play there, uh, doing a good job selling it. He was wide open there for about a 60-yard game, Mike. That's the safety's responsibility. He can't be can't let anybody get behind you, and they did that time. But coming back with a vengeance are the Rebels. Terry Lyman right in there, along with Chad Leedy, Sam Leedy, excuse me. Boom, Lyman right there at the point of attack. And that's going to go for a loss of two, maybe three yards. <laughs> Second down and 11, only a loss of one on the play. Let's see, I, I predict Mike they're going to air it out here. They're, oh, they pitch. Uh, uh oh, option. there he goes. He's open if it gets there. Oh, oh there's pass interference. Has to be. Boy, no flag on the play, Ooh. Mike. Uh, that'll be interesting. Look like he jumped up there and Man. face guarded him, uh, trying to knock the ball away before the ball got there. But he was open, just underthrown. Tom Wolfgram, the only player left for Dixie, and boom, got right in his face. Well, I got to believe that's uh, pass interference there because he was up there grabbing at him before the ball got there. Looked like he may have grabbed a face mask as he went through there, but nonetheless, brings up third and 11. And just when we thought New Mexico was getting predictable, they start pulling out all the shots. That was a great play, just not enough on the throw. If he throws it downfield another two yards, it's a touchdown. Yeah. Martinson will try and keep it. He's looking, 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 but they'll run the clock out. And there's big Lyman again. Terry Lyman having a great game. Stuffing up the middle after that big gain. And that'll bring up fourth down for New Mexico. Yeah, you can see Terry lining up there on the uh, defensive end, and he just comes around the corner there, turns it into the uh, quarterback, and wraps him up. And it's all over when he gets his hands on him. Uh, 40, 50, 47 would be a 57 yard attempt on the field goal, so they will punt it away. The way things are going in this series, look for the, look for the fake. Dixie lining up eight men at the line. They come, but they get it away. And another great kick. Now that's going to pin Dixie inside their 10 yard line there, Mike. And that's a pretty good pooch punt. Uh, he headed for the corner over there. Done a good job scooping the ball up off the uh, snap from the center. You can see it, uh, it dribbles back to him there, and he scoops it up off the grass. and. Uh, just pooches it down there in the corner. So Dixie looking to go 90-something yards plus for their next touchdown or field goal attempt. 
Dixie, not much for field goals as they, Croshaw, one of the more popular fourth and go for it coaches in the league. Spot the ball at the nine yard line with seven seconds to go here in the third quarter. Bingham goes in motion for the Rebels. There's Lockhart right up the middle again, Mike. And he's out close to a first down. He's over the 20 yard line, so first and 10 for the Rebels, and that will be the last play. And they'll have to walk 80 yards and turn it around. Dixie College comfortably in front, 28 to zero through three quarters of play here at Hanson Stadium. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Ahern Rentals, Boulevard Home Furnishings, Stephen Wade Auto Centers, along with Rainbow Sign and Banner. We really appreciate them supporting the community. Dixie College does a great job as well here in sunny St. George. Did you know that it's an academic climate, Larry? Say that again, Mike, I didn't hear you. We got, we got so much crowd noise in our headphones here, I can't hardly hear anything. They're throwing uh, the Nerf footballs out down there. You think they can follow this I think, line? I think they've got a microphone or something down there because it's, it's awfully noisy. Dixie run a play after that punt before the quarter here. Oh, that's right, Lockhart picked <laughs> up that. I was thinking they were inside the 10 yard line, but yeah, Lockhart did run it out. He added another 10 yards to his stats, 12 yards. Burke thrown out of his own end of the court. Field. Field. <laughs> you ding basketball announcers, you're all the same, aren't you? Hey. A intended receiver was Grow, but it's well overthrown by Burke. That'll bring up second 10. Mike, speaking of basketball, I ran into Slocum down there uh, picking up a hamburger. And, and uh, he's a great player. I remember him from last year. We uh, we called the games last year for Dixie. And I'm excited. I'm looking uh, forward to the uh, basketball season right after football. And Slocum, I asked him if he's, uh, he's ready to light it up. And he said definitely. So look for Dixie to have a great year on the basketball court this year, Mike. James Stewart wraps up Eric Lockhart after a gain of six. Call it a pickup of five. That'll bring up third down and five to go. Larry, would you be interested in driving up the mountain tonight? Camping out, maybe seeing if we can see a deer in the morning. I would love to, but uh, I'm playing in uh, Red Hills two-man best ball tomorrow with uh, Mr. Ken Bond from Chili's. So, uh, oh. A little uh, golf action early in the morning at 9 o'clock. Lockhart, again, mowing down defensive players and hanging on to him as Nate Wallace with the tackle. Great blocking up front. And then some missed tackles helps Lockhart. We've got a... We've got a penalty flag coming in late, and uh, Mike's giving it the uh, face mask call. Let's see if he's, oh no, it's against oh. Dixie. Brutal. <laughs> that could be your first miss tonight though, Mike, I think. That's okay. I will repent and I will try and do it better next time. You know, that's kind of an interesting call because it come in uh, right there at the end of the tackle. And I didn't see that many Dixie players around there. I don't know who they were calling it on, but maybe we can see on the replay. An illegal block in the back. Let's see if we can see it on the replay here. It come right at the end of the, the play, oh, right up there at the top of the screen, oh. number 10. But uh, that's a pretty ticky-tack call there, oh. Mike. I'll say, I don't even think he felt him on his back. Yeah. Well, well, that's kind of one of those look-alike fouls we see in basketball. It looked like a foul, and it really wasn't, but uh, it, it was go. called. But Third down and two for Dixie. And they will hand it up the middle. Morgan Bingham picks up the first down quite easily. It takes those referees a long time to blow that whistle, but uh, forward momentum was stopped there. Bingham got the quick handoff from Berg and slid right through the hole. 
Picked up the first down easily, and he's out across maybe the 37-yard line. They'll give it to him at the 36. Clock stops with 13.54 to go in the ball game. Dixie College on top, 28-0 here at Hanson Stadium. I'm Larry Swence along with Mike Zanberg. Mike, it's uh, what a great evening tonight. Uh, we've had some perfect weather the last three or four days here in St. George, and uh, another great evening for a ball game here in sunny, warm St. George. Well, of course, we have the senior games going on, the Huntsman World Senior Games here in town, and I think the city council sells their souls for a couple of weeks so they can guarantee themselves some good weather for these games. I know we've got the golf tournament coming up next Tuesday and Wednesday, so they'll be doing that. Hopefully the weather will stay as nice. The pitch goes to Lockhart, but Berg was being tackled as he tried to pitch and it went behind him. Yeah, Jamal Wingate was all over him, a 6'3", 270-pound defensive lineman. Uh, he had him wrapped up and he still tried to pitch it back there, but uh, Lockhart doing a good job just picking up the ball and falling on it. That's the time where Berg Probably just smart to eat the ball, keep it with him, and accept the sack. They'll have the ball at the 27 yard line, loss of eight. New Mexico uh, showing blitz. They got their uh, linebackers up there, but they drop, drop back. Look out! Oh, there's the backside uh, sack right there by number 54. James Stewart. They showed blitz and then they sacked back, but Stewart coming around the left end, vir virtually untouched. And that's scary as a quarterback. You can't even see him down there. And he's wrapped up, so we continue to go backwards. Third down, 27 yards to go. And we need a big, big play for a first down. Tyler Dabo in at quarterback, and he hands. New players galore, number 20 into the game for the Rebels. 28. Number 28, we don't have a number 20. We don't have a 28. So we can't help you with whoever carried the ball right there, but whoever it was, they did a nice job. Yeah, in the uh, Colonels on Tuesday, we'll have to find out who number 28 is so we can put him on our roster here. Check with the coach on Tuesday afternoon. Flags fly, most likely motion against the Rebels. Tyler Dabo back to punt. He was already in there at the quarterback spot. 28-0, Rebels on top. Closing in on the 11 minute mark in the ball game. A few of the faithful sticking around to see the rest of this ball game. So Dixie will uh, reset here in the uh, punt formation. And New Mexico should get pretty good field position, Mike, with the 11:33 uh, left in the fourth quarter. See if they can march it down, put something on the scoreboard. Sean Wallace standing at his own 40-yard line. Oh. Snap is over the head of Dabo. What's he going to do with it? He tries to kick it. Get out of the end zone, boy. That's a safety. Has to be. Yeah, that is a safety call, and there's a call by the uh, referee. But, you know, that's two feet away from being six points right there. Good job uh, hustling back there and trying to get the ball away was Davo, but the snap was over his head right from the get go. I'm we surprised Davo even tried to kick that away. I thought he'd just run out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, that would have been the smart play because, like you say, Two more feet from uh, going out of that end zone, and it's a touchdown for New Mexico. But hey, they got on the scoreboard, Mike. Somebody blocked it. Well, that's almost like a block punt. Coach Croshaw being the cordial man he is, talking to the officials. There's our cheerleaders showing off for us. Coach Croshaw saying, hey, if you don't want to come over to dinner, that's one thing. 
but you don't have to insult me but as at least, well. Yeah, but at least go deer hunting with me or something, you know. Well, after the safety, you have the option to punt or kick. And I think Inouye has a little more leg than Tyler Dabo, so they will select the kick from the 20 yard line. So once again, New Mexico with a great chance, a good field position, but it really hasn't mattered tonight as the defense of Dixie has been tremendous. Really a one dimensional offense coming at them, but they have been up to the task in stopping the run. Yeah, Mike, it seems like all night long, New Mexico uh, runs two or three good plays, picks up a first down, two first downs, and then they just kind of shoot themselves in the foot with penalties and whatnot, fumbles, and uh, move the ball in the other direction. So just unable to come up with any type of mounting offense to uh, sustain a, a drive. Jones on the return. He sneaks it out to the 45-yard line. New Mexico, if they can move at 55 yards, they will be rewarded with six points here with 11.15 to go, 28 to two. An interesting score, but it's the score nonetheless. Great shot of that beautiful fountain out there, the Dixie Rebel Fountain. Yeah, Mike, it's a, uh, what a stadium. It's a beautiful facility around here. We got, uh, Softball games in the background, uh, Hearst Field over there. Uh, Coach Littlewood doing a great job on that field over there. It's just <laughs> magnificent. Uh, uh, and it's just a gorgeous ball field over there. And uh, great facilities around here in Dixie College. Uh, what a great campus. Uh, great opportunity for the kids to come and enjoy a, uh, a uh, learning experience on uh, one of the best campuses in the uh, Western St. United George. States. Yeah. <laughs> And St. Yeah. George, huh? <laughs> Snow Canyon pushing for that. Well, a good pickup by B.J. Aldridge as he gained the first down plus. The pitch comes to Aldridge once again. And that time, nothing doing. A late flag comes in, and we may have, I don't know, maybe a little holding or that favorite call tonight, the push in the back. We'll wait and see what the call is. But that play, nothing doing. And it looks like the penalty is going to go against New Mexico. Yeah, there's the holding call, Mike. Let's see if we can see who's holding out there. They come in late, a little bit right there, huh? You can see the jersey of Pagafi being stretched out. They'll have to, well, it'll be interesting to see if they'll accept it or not. The play really didn't go anywhere. But they will back him up, make him go first and 20 instead of second and 10. <laughs> Mike Tulasoa comes out. He'll give way to Mashari Scott for the Rebels. The clock is moving, 10 and a half to go in the ball game. Martinson back to pass. He's sacked by Lyman. He's got him wrapped up and there. He finally goes down, but boy, Lyman having a great game. <laughs> and yeah, a little... they're, they're having a hard time keeping Lyman out. Uh, he's been able to just waltz around that corner and, and uh, penetrate right to the quarterback. Tempers flaring a little bit down there, Mike, tonight. Uh, They've had to break them up three or four times here in the last couple plays. So. A little frustration on New Mexico's part. You know, Larry, around town, you see different people. It's amazing how many people are watching these games. It's a lot of fun. It's nice to hear the comments. And if there's something we're doing well, please let us know. If there's something we could do a little bit better. Because you're stuck with us. <laughs> like it or not, here we are. <laughs> You can call us on the uh, hotline, uh, Craig Bowler Jack hotline, I think, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, That's our next the, step. Uh, golf course. <laughs> yeah, one eight hundred Bowler Jack. So As long, just don't make it a nine hundred number, Larry. <laughs> I don't think anybody would call us if they had to pay for it. But yeah, we <laughs> we enjoy doing this. Uh, uh, 
uh, me and Mike talk about things we can do uh, on the air as we're, we're calling the game, and we have a good time with the opportunity to call the games, and we appreciate Dixie College. We appreciate all our sponsors. That's the uh, key to uh, production of the uh, telecast is the sponsors. Uh, Stephen and Wade always doing a great job, and Rainbow Sign and Banner and all the other sponsors. So looks like New Mexico misfiring uh, several times here, Mike, going, like you said, the wrong direction. They, they get great field position, and uh, I don't know if our defense is really that good or if they just... <laughs> forget which way they're supposed to head, but uh, New Mexico shooting themselves again in the uh, right foot and the left foot. A lot of linen touching the ground here late in the game. So they'll run the clock, nine and a half now. Which brings up uh, second and 33, Mike. <laughs> Ouch. Second and a whole lot. Martinson looking to pass. He may keep it. Look out from behind. He gets it off. But it's incomplete as he tried to hit his punter slash wide receiver, Warren Heckler. What a great name, Heckler. <laughs> I like it. He great, uh, uh, almost a coverage sack there as they almost got to the quarterback. Defensive backs doing a good job as Martinson, Martinson really had no one to go to. Mike uh, Heckler, a six foot, 185 pound wide receiver slash punter, like you say, sophomore out of where? Out of where? Spur, Texas. No, one more up. Elephant Butte. Uh oh! You can't put that one. Uh oh, he's running oh, he, in place. He cut to the wrong side. I have never seen that. He must have thought he was wide open. Mike, I referred to that as boxer bunch up as he's running down the field. <laughs> Boy, he was <laughs> off to the races, and also, I think you're right, Larry. His boxers bunched up on him right there, and he got right into Charles Rogers, and who made a great flying tackle to bring him down, but Charles may be hurt as he's lying on the 10-yard line. I can't believe they caught him. Yeah, it looked like he was uh, say la vie <laughs> on the way for a uh, quick six points, but... Uh... That stingy defense, Mike. <laughs> hey, Dixie's not going to let him in if they're not going to earn it. I thought they had him wrapped up at the, <laughs> at the line of scrimmage, but a great run by, that's that man, B.J. Aldrich, who's been having a good second half. They've really gone out, taken away from Jones, Terrell Jones. There's Carl Ro Charles Rogers walking off. Looks like maybe his wrist or arm there is hurt, his left arm. Yeah, it's good to see him up and uh, able to walk out of the game. Here we got it again on replay. He just breaks up through there and right there a missed tackle. And it looked, he had uh, 10 yards on those guys. He, he, cut, he cut left right into him. Yeah. But anyhow, first and 10 from the 15 yard line. Martinson fakes and runs out to the left side. Nothing doing. He's wrapped up viciously by Mashari Scott for a gain of Seto. Yeah, doing a good job pursuing down the line there. There was just nowhere to go. Nate, uh, he doesn't have uh, blinding speed for a quarterback, and he's he's much advised to stay in that pocket and try to throw the ball, but he hasn't been able to get outside or around the corner. Dixie with great speed on defense. Second down and 11, he loses a yard. That goes down as a quarterback sack. And they fake the play action. Well, they play action fake. And they're standing in the end zone. It's a touchdown, New Mexico. Unbelievable, they slide it right through. And Ted Moore on the receiving end. That was a great catch. He came back to the ball. If he doesn't come back, it may be intercepted. But yeah, you can see on the replay here, it looked like the receiver just, he wanted it just that much more. And looked like it should have been defended and knocked down, but uh, it slid through there. He was able to catch it. A wobbly pass, but a touchdown nonetheless. And New Mexico military and Fuego. Posting a touchdown on the board to make it 28 to eight at the uh, 8.39. I think eights are wild up there on the board. 8.39 left in the game. They're going for two. I like it. The quick fade to the corner to Rodriguez. No, he's out of bounds. 
I like that fade play. You have to have a really athletic receiver out there. And Sam Rodriguez had the mismatch, but couldn't quite drag it in. 28-8 is our score. Boxer bunch up. You are the man, Larry. 8.39 to go in the ball game. And we're just coasting through the rest of this one. Yeah, Mike, I think uh, when Dixie goes back and they look at the tapes of the ball game this week, uh, Crochet will see a lot of things that he likes, but he'll also see a lot of things that they need to work on. And they say we keep talking about that ranking, and is it deserved or is it not deserved? And Crochet has mentioned several times that his team really needs to step it up and, and uh, motivate themselves. So I think they've got the ability and the talent. It's just putting it all together out there on the field. Next week, Dixie College goes on the road to Walla Walla. It's a two o'clock start. And then we'll be back here at Hanson Stadium November 1st to kick off the month against Arizona Western, a great football team. And that is an afternoon ball game. The sun will be shining. Generally, beautiful football weather here in November. A one o'clock start. We'll follow that up on the 8th of November with Eastern Arizona at 2.30. And I believe the 2.30 start against Eastern Arizona is homecoming. So we'll have parades and hoopla, and beauty queens. It'll be a party. And here yeah. goes number 28, the mystery man. Look out. One man to beat, and he handles him. Oh, he's oh, out of bounds. There's a linen on the play. We'll see what the call is. Generally, that's a push in the back or an illegal block. We'll go back to the two-point conversion attempt. Who is that man? Maybe it's Tony Jones, and we don't know it. He went in and put on a new number. 21 was hexed, and he's coming out on fire. That's number 28. He's got Tony Jones type speed, <laughs> definitely. That's for Man, sure. Man, he was flying down that sideline. But it looks like the Rebels are walking back down, and that'll be negated. We'll show you on the replay here and see if we can pick up. Uh, oh, we don't have the replay, so we're not going to be able to see the push in the back. But uh, like you said, Mike, that's. That's generally the call when you see the flag come out on those uh, long kickoff returns or punt return plays. But still, a great field position. The flag well downfield. So nonetheless, Dixie will have it at the 49-yard line. 8.26 to go in the ball game. Dixie with a 20-point lead. The over-under now in question at 40. Yeah, we're up to 36. Uh, <laughs> you want to switch your bet, Mike? <laughs> you bailing out already? Lockhart in the ball game for Dixie. And it'll be interesting. I, you wonder why Lockhart's in there. They have a, several running backs. Maybe he's trying to get that elusive 300-yard game. If he could break one here, you never know. Yeah, Mike, he's fast approaching that. I'm sure he's uh, 275, 280 right in that area. So They'll go to him once again. He's got a hole. Let's see what he can do with it. And he forges forward. He'll be two yards short of the first down. We're at the uh, 7.30 mark left in the ball game, 28-8 with uh, your running Rebels with the football. There's a good picture of our, our camera crew down there working. Mike, are they playing golf or are they filming the football game? Whoever's driving the golf cart's got a great job. I hope he's got a drink in his hand. I think it's Ben sitting right there in the uh, passenger seat. He's got the great job. Bingham, look out! Oh, there he goes. Morgan Bingham goes over the 100-yard rushing mark tonight. And there's that quick draw inside as they hand it to the fullback. And Morgan Bingham off to the races with his second touchdown of the night for Dixie College. And there goes the over-under. We're over, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, it just 
nice when we were showing uh, ball control in low scoring ball game. All of a sudden, the teams have erupted for some touchdowns here in the uh, fourth quarter. Dixie answers New Mexico's touchdown immediately. Nothing like a three play drive that goes 49 yards and it's all on the ground. Kevin Inouye on to try the PAT. He's a perfect four for four. Looking to go five for five on the night. Yeah, that's gonna Boy give, man. Mike, that's gonna give Dixie uh, fullback and tailback both over, well over 100 yards. Lockhart uh, fast approaching the 300 yard marker, but uh, Dixie just tearing it up on the ground tonight. Those big offensive linemen are just gaping holes down there, Mike. Even you and I can run down there and uh, chalk it up for 100 yards plus tonight, I think. Linemen doing a great job. Croshaw, I think, uh, Gatorade and a day off for those linemen on uh, Tuesday when they go back to practice. So. Five to eight is our score after the Morgan Bingham 30, well that had to be a 40 yard gain. 42 yard run for Morgan Bingham. And no buncher box up, boxer bunch up on that play as Bingham flew into the end zone. Kevin Inouye to kick it away. They're standing on the 10 yard line. They'll take it on the 20. And wrapped up at the 30-yard line is number 22, Sean Wallace. He's from Edmond, Oklahoma. They got him from all over in Texas, New Mexico, down there in Roswell. Almost a collision there on the kickoff. Yeah, it was kind of a short kick, and uh, the up man had to take control there and uh, catch the ball. We got uh, procedure on, D on Dixie. It looked like uh, some of the uh, guys jumped the line there a little bit before the kick. I was kind of looking down there, but it was awfully close. Nevertheless, the flag was thrown, and that's the call. But it looks like they're going to re-kick. Move them back five and re-kick it. Well, they had the ball at the 29-yard line. We'll see if it's a good penalty for them. Whoops. 6.50 to go in the ball game. Kevin Inouye will have another chance, but it'll be moved back at the 30-yard line. We had a little trivia the other night. Not here, but we were trying to figure out in the NFL, did they kick from the 30 or the 35? I think they kick from the 30. I voted the 30, but I'm not real positive. I was going to watch this week and make sure, but uh, <laughs> I think it is a 30-yard line. They used to be the 35, and they moved them back a couple of years ago because they kept pounding it out of the end zone. And at uh, Mile High Stadium, it doesn't matter if it's the 20 or the 30. It still goes out of the stadium. And up Jones there in will catch this one and look out. And a good, that's a 15-yard penalty is what it ends up being as they get it out to the 45-yard line. There's a beautiful moon coming up over the horizon there. Full moon a couple nights ago, so it's going back down. A little yellowish. But Jones did a nice job, bounces off some tackles. And Dixie lucky to drag him down. They uh, they referred to that as the deer hunter special moon, I think. When you get out in the out in the wilderness and you get lost, you have a little moonlight to guide your way <laughs> back to camp. So a lot of the uh, the guys out deer hunting this weekend, a lot of the uh, the widows they call them, I guess, deer hunter widows are at the ball game. Boy, they run the reverse, a long, drawn-out play. But going nowhere, Kyle Graff making the tackle, the local boy, that we have a flag on the play. And there's a shot of the moon tonight. This has been a lot. We ran through the first three quarters, and this fourth quarter, a lot of penalties. It's a couple touchdowns, taken forever. But that's okay, Dixie on top, 35 to eight. And we'll go downfield and see what the call is. 
There they go again, shooting themselves. And they're running out of feet, Larry. Yeah, they just, boy, it's just, you got first down and 10 yards to go. And before you know it, it's uh, first down and 30 again. It's, they just keep going the wrong way. But they, first and 20, and they're going to run the ball again. Well, Kyle Wilson right on top of the play as he wraps up Terrell Jones. And Wilson just hanging out. They run right at him. He comes off the block. Did a nice job to wrap up Terrell. And that will bring up second and 20. No gain on the play for Terrell Jones. Kyle Wilson, when we started this season, well, against New Zealand, the, the, the game that really wasn't a game, Wilson was at fullback, and he had some good runs. Martinson keeps the ball around the left side, tries to make a move and leaps over somebody. A flag is down, and he's punched out at the 49, short of a first down. You can see here on replay, Mike, he just uh, fakes to the tailback there. Oh, that's the play before. Hands it off to the tailback there, I should say, but uh, this play, uh, if we have it, doesn't look like it. He uh, fakes it into the line there, same play, and just rolls out around the end, the left end. I wouldn't be surprised if this is against New Mexico. And there you have it, holding. <laughs> yeah, he makes a good play and gets uh, 15 yards back of that 20 they need. And you can turn it around and march it the other direction. So as we said earlier, next week, a week off for us here locally. But Dixie will be playing in Walla Walla. You can tune into that game on KDXU 890. Game's at 2 o'clock. Free game goes at 1.30. So it brings up uh, second. second. 20. I was going to say second and 17 or okay. something like that. Pretty close to that. Well, that was a good, timing. good idea, a little timing pattern, but Rodriguez was not in the same place as the ball. And that goes incomplete. So I'll bring up third down. Yeah, that pass there, Mike, yeah, as a quarterback, yeah, you put a little air underneath it and let your uh, receiver run down there and catch that ball. You throw a beeliner out there, it's just almost got to be perfect timing. But. So this is a non-conference game, Walla Walla is, along with this, Arizona Western. And Eastern Arizona on homecoming, they beat us last year as our only loss. Downfield, it's picked off, and that's Charles Rogers. Well, there's a late flag that come in there, Mike, after that's the- not uh, Charles Rogers. After the uh, interception, I don't know if there was some pass interference. They were kind of jousting for position down there. Mashari Scott came up with the ball. Yeah, he broke off from the defender there, made the interception, and fell down. Then the flag come in way late, but uh, I think we're going to have Dixie pass interference here. The defense is staying out there for the Rebels. <laughs> And that's a good call. We won't be able to look at that, but he was, looked like he pushed off the receiver. The ball was a little underthrown. Mashari Scott not credited for the pick. The 15 yards not too bad, but the automatic first down helps New Mexico as they get over midfield to the 48 yard line of the Rebels. And we have 5.24 to go. New Mexico looking for their second touchdown of the night. They have eight points on the board. A safety and a touchdown. Dixie, five touchdowns tonight. Three in the first half. Well, two in the first half, three in the second. As they have led throughout tonight. Boy, Mike, we're going to be setting some kind of record for uh, penalties. Has there been a play yet, the fourth quarter, that we haven't had a flag on? It's Seems like incredible. every play. Jones picks up three yards there on the carry. 
But uh, they're talking to New Mexico, so that must have been a flag against Dixie. We might see a uh, neutral zone infraction here. <laughs> I didn't know we had any neutral territory. <laughs> Are we in Switzerland? I think Dixie lined up offsides. Let's see what the call is here. Excellent call, Larry. You know, we can Sing see it here. There he is, jumping off sides. And that could be a neutral zone infraction. It's Charles Roden trying to get an early jump. There's a good defensive package by the Rebels. And slipping on the play is the intended receiver, Ted Moore. That's actually somebody we don't have, 82. Yeah, Mike, uh, he just kind of ran a uh, five yard down the end curl there. Pass was thrown behind him four or five yards and he just couldn't stop. Feet slid out from underneath him and wasn't able to catch the ball. The Hunter's Moon, the Rebels tonight will go to six and one on the season. Four and one in conference play. And there's a good catch and run. We got another penalty on the play, Mike. Say it isn't so. I think American Linen must be a sponsor here because there's a lot of linen on the floor tonight. Yeah, there's another holding call, so negate a, uh, a great play, 25-yard pass play there, and take it away. I think minute per minute, we ran the first three quarters as fast as we played this, we're going to play this fourth quarter. Yeah, I think you're correct, Mike. It's, uh, we were just watching that clock zoom by as they were running the ball, running the ball, running the ball the first three quarters. Now, and did they pay the officials by the hour? Because these guys were going to be out of here and, and to bed. Yeah. By the usage of the flag, I believe, is how it's going to be uh, rewarded and paid tonight. Second and ten. Now look to throw Martinson. It's picked. No. Boy, stars in his eyes right there. Number 43 for Dixie College. That's Tom Wolfgram. He would have been off to the races. Just a lazy pass. And that is a, just an errant pass by Martinson. Laid it out there. Boom, Wolfgram left his feet to get it. Did a nice job to knock it down. Yeah, he's back there playing safety, and uh, he read that all the way. And I'm with you, Mike. I thought he had a, a pick there and was headed the other direction. But New Mexico uh, taking a uh, timeout. Well, do you go for it? Well, it's third and ten. Do you think they may be talking about two plays here? But I say strike up the band. <laughs> Let's play some tunes here Let's while we fire wait. fire the crowd up. Mike, it's awfully quiet. Do we have any crowd out there? <laughs> oh, speaking of firing up the band, there you go, folks. Mike, Mike carries a lot of clout uh, up here in the booth. When he says strike up the band, they fire it up. Yeah, there's still uh, quite a few fans out there. We, uh, we want to thank our uh, corporate sponsors once again. Of course, they're the ones that uh, bring us this telecast. Ahorn, Ahorn Rental, Boulevard Home Furnishing, Stephen Wade, Auto Center, Rainbow Sign and Banner. Ahorn Rental, uh, Rainbow Sign and Banner. There's our corporate sponsors, and they do a, uh, a great job contributing uh, funds for the uh, college and for the broadcast. All right, that brings up third down and 10. New Mexico drops back in the pass. Martinson looking downfield. He's got two receivers in the same place. Look out, it's picked off by Kyle Wilson. He pitches, a ah, great play as he pitches the ball to, to number 19. We have no name. Oh, what a great play. Here's the replay. A bad pass route by New Mexico as they have two receivers in the same place. Kyle Graff picks it off and then pitches over for an extra game. They pick up 15, 20 yards after the pitch. So a heads up play that defense 
Those guys want to score any way they can. They're yeah. always looking for a way to score. Yeah, very unselfish there. They just said, here, I'll pitch it, you run. <laughs> <laughs> After he pitched, he took a hard hit, so I don't know if it was worth it or not, but picked up an additional uh, 15, 20 yards after the pitch. First down and 10, the Rebels lead 35 to eight. This game is all but over. 4.22 to go. We may have a new quarterback, and we do, Tyler Dabo, who's been punting tonight. And they hand it to the Phantom Runner, and he's gone. Who is that man? It's got to be Jones. Got to be <laughs> number 28. Tony Jones has taken on a new number and is lighting it up. Let's see. He's yeah. awesome. Okay, I can tell you who it's not. <laughs> Read down the list. You know, Mike, uh, Croshaw might have brought in a uh, phantom runner, someone that's not going to fumble the ball and hang on to the ball. He's doing a great job. It's uh, two touchdowns. He's Our phantom runner's probably over 100 yards. <laughs> we got three players over 100 yards for Dixie. Somebody's representing us in the booth. We said we could gain 100 yards, so we suited someone up off the, out of the fans that looked a little faster than we were. Holy cow, they're going to go for two points. And there's a flag on the play. Yeah. Delay of the game. That 25 seconds. How do you uh, know when the play clock? Field clock ran down there, huh? Field <laughs> clock. Hey, that's good. <laughs> play clock. Whatever that clock clock's called. As long as it's not a shot clock, Larry. Yeah. So they'll get the five-yard penalty, but it looks like they're going to still go for two points. Nope. Kevin Inouye on to kick the PAT. Put it at the 15, tack on 10 yards, and it's a 25-yard point after. You know, Mike, uh, we're at the 416 mark, and this is kind of what we thought this game would be, would be a uh, blowout. We're at 41-8 now, and that's, that's kind of what we were looking at. He just, was it that, hit, was that a snap upright. hook left? It hit the upright. Did it really? He stepped back for the chip shot. A little high snap may have affected him, but just the extra distance was enough to make it go left and hit the upright. But no worry, 41 to eight. Okay, if we set the over under at 50, <laughs> that helps with the missed PAT. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, we'll say it was 49 and a half. <laughs> Dixie College, yeah, you're right, Larry. This is the kind of play we expected to see for the Rebels all night long. Only 14 points in the first half. They've tacked on four touchdowns here in the second half. Yeah, eight touchdowns on the night, 56 points. You, we did. We expected to see that 50, 60 point blowout. And a good kick. They pinned Jones down on the left side, but he's going to come out. Oh, what a big hit. Number 20. We don't have his number on this program either. We got the wrong program, I'm telling you. Hey. Who are these phantom? I'm going to have to ask uh, well, Kershaw who these phantom players are. I think he's recruiting a few of those Snow Canyon football players. Man. Got some early graduates coming out of high school, I guess, or he something. He took a... Well, there's our third favorite call, the offsetting penalty. And here you can see the kickoff. It's going to be a big hit, but he, Jones bounces off of it. And then after number 20 runs into Jones, watch the hit he takes right there. There's the flag right there, number 79, mixing it up, John Colesaple. If you're going to get your name, done, name on TV, that's a good way to do it. Yeah, Mike, we're, some of these phantom players, number 20 and stuff, they need to call us this week and let us know who they are. <laughs> we can update our rosters because we've got two or three players that aren't even on the roster. I hope that's not a violation or an infraction of the <laughs> NJCAA rules and we're just getting our team disqualified. <laughs> Four minutes left to go in the ball game. We have a new quarterback. No, we don't. No. Martinson, he hands it to Terrell Jones and look out, he's off to the races. Somebody's got an angle on him. 
And he's going to get him at the 20 yard line. And that angle was cut down. That's number 19. We don't have him on the sheet. But he had the angle. You can see he came a long way to make that tackle. There he is, just coming into your screen. And he was the only one that was going to save that touchdown. Yeah, Terrell. Terrell doing a good job. Uh, there's no quitting him. He's still uh, firing it up. And he's gone well over 100 yards in the game, too, rushing. Well, so. I'll say he had uh, nearly 100 yards in the first half. He could be up to the 200 yeah, yard mark as well. Yeah, probably at least 200 then. So they're looking for another touchdown here, and they hand it to the fullback, and he's right up the middle for a good pickup, Steve Orsak. New Mexico taking, taking advantage of the second and third unit of Dixie. Kyle Wilson doing a great job at linebacker there, stepping up and uh, making that tackle. Aaron Pearson checking in for the Rebels, number 51. On the defensive end, he's out of Salt Lake City. Clock's running, three and a half to go. Dixie on top, 41-8. And just punishing running by Terrell Jones. And that gives him a first and goal from the six yard line of Dixie, maybe the seven. And you know the defense doesn't want to give up another touchdown, Larry. Yeah, I think they're trying to keep him under that uh, magical 10 number, but uh, I think New Mexico's uh, possessed here a little bit. Uh, did you see any flying saucers fly over top? Because they've fired it up here the last couple minutes. Well, this is what they could be doing. The thing about it is there's no penalties. Yeah, exactly, Mike. We've had more than one or two plays without a penalty. So. I think that was our fourth consecutive play without stoppage. We're going to get through this game yet. So they run off tackle there on the left side for a little three-yard gain, and I think they're just going to run it and try to punch it in here. They got four downs to do it in. Second down and four. Oh, definitely, they will use all of them if they need to. Dixie stocks it up, but there they go. Orsak rolls right over Kyle Wilson into the end zone. And that's a touchdown for New Mexico Military. Gives them 41, 14 points. Inverted score, 41-14. And I'm sure they'll go for two. No reason not to. The over's gone. The oh, under's yeah. gone. <laughs> Just as well keep pouring it on. Do we see a uh, Steve Young draw or the option here, Mike? Inverted wishbone by New Mexico. They'll throw it into the middle, and it's caught for a two-point conversion. Ted Moore, he caught the touchdown earlier. So New Mexico. Making the fourth quarter exciting anyway. As we see some action in the end zone and Ted, Ted Moore wide open. Good protection by for Martinson and he hits 41-16. Dixie College is gonna win this one. Yeah, cross shot down there. Uh, not too happy with his defense and some of the players, they looked a little lackadaisical on that uh, touchdown drive, plus the uh, two points. They were just kind of standing around. That was kind of an easy, and he's, he's got his hands on his hips. He's not too happy about it. Well, that's uh, the reason we don't have the parabolic mic next to Coach, next to Coach Croshaw. For those moments, exactly. Well, I'm gonna look out for the onside kick here. Because New Mexico really with nothing to lose. Dixie maybe in anticipation of that as well. They slide nine players within 10 yards of each other. For Dixie to recover this, or for New Mexico to recover this, it needs to go at least 10 yards before it becomes a live ball or it needs to bounce off nine players within 10 yards of each other. For Dixie to recover this, or for New Mexico to recover this, it needs to go at least 10 yards before it becomes a live ball or it needs to bounce off a Dixie player. 
the best ice onside kick I have ever witnessed. The kicker actually kicked a line drive into the first guy standing right in front of him, and it bounced back right into his hands. And there it is. Just a like that quiver. attempt right there, huh? Yeah, he just tried to line drive it at somebody. Corey Groh gets the return up to the 45, and there's some Lennon on the play. It came in a little late, but I'm going to guess a late block. Here we can see it, or an illegal block. He tried to punch it right into somebody. Grow with good hands. And there's the late flag. The officials discussing it, and we'll go downfield to see what the call is. That's new. So, all righty, yeah. We're at the uh, 216 mark, uh, Larry Swenson along with Mike Sandberg. And it's been a pleasure, Mike. Uh, good to see you here tonight. Uh, I missed the uh, broadcast last week, and it's good to be back in the uh, captain's chair doing the broadcast with you. Dabo hands it off to the fullback. He'll pick up a couple. Kyle Wilson, the ball carrier. Dixie will just run the clock out if they can pick up a first down. That will be the ball game. Yeah, Larry, nice to have you back. I, yeah, I'm surprised they got here as early as I did. I left the golf course at seven. Snuck in here. Not too bad. Dabo gives it to Tony Jones. And he's looking for everything he can get, and he drags a pile up over the 45 to the 41-yard line. And Tony Jones stops the clock at a buck 28 with his long gain. Good pickup of 20, 25 yards, and he's trying to get in the 100-yard. That would be uh, unprecedented, wouldn't it? Four players over 100 yards. That would be something. Lockhart used pick most of them up tonight. That would go down in the history books, I believe. There's a... <laughs> a shot of the uh, the loyal, faithful fans that have stayed to the end. Here. Or else all the losers that have nothing <laughs> else to do. <laughs> Davo pitches it to Tony Jones, and he stood up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one. He lost his uh, fullback on that. <laughs> we got a replay. Watch, uh, watch the fullback here. He kind of spins out in his tracks. <laughs> so there goes a blocker. And he gets knocked down from behind the boot. So, yeah. is that Kyle Wilson? I can't yeah, tell. It Looks like Kyle Wilson. <laughs> Kyle, you're you're the man, baby. You're doing a great job out there. Royal Weekly in at wide receiver number 82. They split the backfield and in motion. Kyle Wilson, give him a little head start so he won't slide. <laughs> Tony Jones inside picks up a couple. But he's thrown back, and guess what, folks? That's the ball game, 20 okay. seconds, and that's going to be the last play of the night. Strike up the van. The Dixie College Rebels come back from a devastating loss. They lost 41-12 to last week. They turn it around this week. They'll win it. 41-16, to a final score here at Eaton Stadium. You can put it on the board. There it is, 41-16, like you said, Mike. You know, a good showing and uh, yet a bad showing tonight with Dixie. They've still got a lot of things. So there's our uh, director. The staff, everybody that brings the game to you, we're thankful to our sponsors. We've mentioned them. For Larry Swenson, I'm Mike Sandberg. Again, thanks to our sponsors. Thanks for watching the Community Education Channel. Good night, everybody. Good night.